Hey everybody, hope everybody's doing well. Um, if you were like me and had literally no idea what the heck all this naval jargon is, um, I've at least done my research so I can maybe help you guys out with what all the bits are uh, before you go ahead and build. Um, if you've gone ahead and bit the bullet to get some Master and Commander boxes, or maybe you've picked up the war game that's illustrated and gotten either the frigate, uh, which is this larger vessel, so there's one frigate on the sprue, or the two brigs, uh, which are a smaller vessel of which you get two per sprue. I'm just going to go ahead and point out some features on here so that when you look in the book, uh, or if you have no idea how to assemble these, you at least you, get, you make a bit of headway. Uh, so first of all, um, so for the frigate, obviously you're going to be mounting the two hulls together. I'm pretty sure even the most landlubber out of there will realize that these are the cannon ports. Okay, and this is the main hull. Uh, there's three large masts on here, and then a fourth little smaller mast. Um, the smaller, the small little mast is the one that sticks out the front, which is called the bowsprit. Um, you have these other masts here. One is slightly one. one first of all, has these um, the furled up. They, these are the foot lines. Uh, for the courses, the courses are the the sails that would sit underneath here, but typically in battle they're always raised up, uh, so that uh, if they get hit by a fire shot, they don't fall down and kill the crew on board or on the deck. Um, you'll notice this mast over here doesn't have this stuff here, and so this will always be the rearmost mast, um, because on the rearmost mast there's a sail that's called the spanker. Yes, I know. Uh, and the spanker is attached to these two very similar looking, but they're actually different lengths. So one's a boom and one's a gaff, and these attach to here, and these this does not have um, these foot ropes over here. Um, some of the other things that are kind of going to be obvious are going to be, uh, these are figureheads, so there's more than one. The figurehead goes to the front of the, the vessel right here. Uh, and you also get some stern plates. So you get three different ones. Um, some are more French than other than you know. Some are more French. Some are more English. But I mean, uh, realistically, you can go either way. Uh, if you've gone ahead and picked up uh, one of the fleet boxes, uh, as I have over there, then you're going to get uh, three of these. So these are fifth-rate frigates, and you're going to get three of the third-rate. Um, larger ships and in those you're going to get metal you're going to get named metal um, stern plates and figureheads so but I mean if you get just the plastic ones you can put them in there and then there's additional stuff uh, like little boats it's upside down but you will we'll go through this later and then there's anchors so instead of pointing out the rest of the stuff on here I'm just going to go ahead and grab my assembled frigate stand by because I'll kind of explain the best way to put this together. So I'm just going to change the view here a little bit here. Pardon the uh, camera jiggling here. So as you can see, uh, to use the, the nautical terms, uh, so this is the bowsprit as we talked about. So this sticks out because part of the rigging, whoops, there's going to be a line connecting from here to here and the triangular sails that hang off of these lines are, are what's called the jibs. This mast in the front, out of the ones with the two foot lines, the front one is the shorter one. This here, the main mast, is the tallest of the three. And remember how I was talking about the rear mast, although in nautical terms called the mizzen mast, doesn't have the foot ropes here. It does have the boom and the gaff. Okay, now I've seen already some people, because at first glance these two pieces they look they look identical. One is very very slightly longer than the other, but I have seen people put the longer one up here. So when they go to put the actual sail on here, um, the sails, there's going to be a part that sticks out so they might have to trim it or something like that. So um, just, a, just a word to the wise. Um, Make sure the longer of the two is on the, the is on the lower one is the boom and then the gaff is up here. 
Um, additionally, you'll note um, that it's not one big mass. They're not made out of sequoia trees out of California. They are made, they're composite, so you get one mast and then it's attached to a second mast and then it's attached to a third mast. They go forward, so don't put them on backwards by mistake. There's no, um, there's no slot or anything when you go to assemble these um, just right into the hull here. Um, there's no front and back. Uh, you can actually twist. Um, almost every ship I've seen so far has had um, the yards, which are these, the cross pieces perpendicular to the to the vessel but I mean obviously if the winds coming in from a, a, an angle the the yards themselves would they're loose like they're not attached to the mast they're just roped to it so you would move the yards over um, and same with this uh, the boom and the gaff these would actually swing uh, to the left yeah, let's turn this around here so this could swing out to the left or to the right um, so there is that. So if you do want to try um, your hand at something a little more uh, a little more expert, uh, you might want to try swinging them so it looks like it's coming from a different direction from the wind. Although I don't know how that's going to play with your rigging. Um, and so yeah, like I said, make sure the masts are at least the right one is in the right spot. Um, I know when we dry fit ours for our game the other day. Uh, we had this one in the front, but I mean, whatever. It was literally an hour after we opened the boxes, and we wanted just to play. A um, couple of other things. Uh, the anchors. So the anchors, there's two little nubs that come out the, 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 the sides here. These are called cat heads. And in the rigging guide, uh, the rigging is supposed to go around the cat heads, which is that bit right there. And the cat head is also how they lift the anchors in and out. Um, there's like a wheel with a bunch of spokes uh, and frigates and brigs that's underneath here. Uh, on the larger vessels, it's right up top. It's like a, the Conan, the wheel of uh, the wheel of pain. Him, you know, manually turning that big giant wheel. Well, you'd have eight guys, uh, and if it's a larger ship like a first rate, you'd have two guys per piece. So you have like up to sixteen guys trying to raise the anchors. Uh, so I've glued the anchors when they're raised up and lashed to the to the to the front here. They're up against. Let me just pick this up and just get, get you guys a better view. Whoops, of course, the focus is all jacked. There we go. So now you can see. Now you can also see the figurehead. So the figurehead slots in there in plastic. Uh, the metal one goes in there as well. I just picked a generic. Uh, there's like a warrior looking guy with a shield, so I chucked that on there. Um, for the rear plate, for the stern plate, I just went with a generic. It's hard to do this while holding a camera. So the French had like just generic looking ones. Any of the ones that have tiny looking um, lions on there, those are typically the British ones. Um, the two little bits that stick up uh, over the stern plate, those are actually lamps. Those are lanterns. Uh, so you would paint those uh, yellow uh, if you want them lit. Um, what's some other features on here? Obviously the rigging isn't on here, the sails aren't on here. Oh, just to, something with the rigging. Um, just to note, the rigging isn't actually what this, unless it's the jib, aren't what the sails are attached to. The rigging that we've got with the little bobbins, or if you're using black thread, those are just to keep the masts in place. Those are not typically moved. So those are black, they were tarred down um, in real life. Uh, so that's why they're black. That's why you use black thread on those. Um, the other rigging, and these are too small scale to do like all the other ropes and stuff like that, the ones that would go through blocks, and those would be the ones to move the yards uh, left and right and to lower and uh, to take in some sail. So that's totally different. So, And I have seen pictures of, of ones where they're redoing them and, and they're not 100% tight. Um, what else do I want to cover here real quick? Um, just features on board uh, in terms of what they're called. The front area that's from here to here is called the, the forecastle, although everybody pronounces it the foxhole. Um, the heads are actually right here. They would come up here and this is where you go to the bathroom. You just basically squat down and just right into the ocean there. Um, on the larger ships there'd be like a netting up at the top called the Marines Walk. Because uh, when you go to do a boarding action, the Marines would walk up this 
onto the other ship. Um, the main deck is actually this middle part here. Um, this would typically be open. These are just the bars across where you would put the ship's boats. More on that in a second. So this part back here is the quarter deck. This is typically the command and control kind of spot on most ships. So on this ship in particular here, um, it's hard to see, but there's a little nub sticking out right here by these hatches. That nub right there, paint it black because this is the chimney for the ship's galley that's underneath here. Um, on this one here, these two things here, there'd be two wheels. These are two wheels to, to for the rudder, to, to turn the tiller. Um, and then back here, this is the hatch to the captain's deck. Uh, normally the rear area, if it's raised up, is called the poop deck. Um, up here is uh, crow's nests. Uh, but you'd have, you'd have look, crow's nests, as, as much as you think on the pirate ships, are at the very, very top. So for here, the, the, this would be, you'd have marines, sometimes you'd have a swivel gun here, so you'd have marines. The swivel gun would be to shoot onto the decks of other ships. The uh, lookouts would actually be way the hell up here. Um, I'm just going to go and grab the... So the description of all the bits and everything um, is the same for the brig, except for it's got one less mast. Um, but the brig still has this arrangement in the back where you've got a boom, a gaff, and um, a mast with uh, no foot ropes and then one with all the foot ropes here. I'm just going to go ahead and switch out to the... I bought the French um, the, the French naval set. So these are the two first rates. So clearly they're a lot larger, but what's nice about this is that you, I can actually point out a couple of things. Uh, so remember I told, said there was like a big huge uh, Conan Wheel of Pain style thing? That's what this is saying, called the capstan. Uh, you'd have a bunch of guys rotating this, and it would go click, 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 uh, so it wouldn't lower the uh, the anchors, and the anchors would just come up here. Uh, this ship has what's called bow uh, chasers, so you have guns aiming to the fore. Um, and obviously, the bow spread's going to be here, so it's going to shoot to the left and to the right of that. You've got a bajillion T guns across the side. You can even see the uh, the ladder up the side. Uh, the heavier guns, which weigh about 1,200 pounds, would be on the bottom. The lighter guns are on the upper-ish uh, decks and on the top decks, because this is the age of carronades. So these are the carronades. So these are the shortest range guns in the game, but do the most damage. Think like shotguns. So they were able to cram with new f uh, forging technology or foundry technology or they made, made uh, uh, carronades. So here as well, you can see the better delineation of the decks. So foxhole, uh, the main uh, deck, so there'd be doors going in and out here, and the, the ship's boats would be sitting right above here. Oh, another feature I want to mention on the other ship, but it's on this one as well, uh, but this is actually modeled on, sorry, sorry, I'll go back. In terms of painting, this row right here on the main deck, so the rest of it, it will be wood, this here is canvas. So this is what's called hammock netting. So the sailors, they chuck their hammocks in here. Basically it's like, think like sandbag uh, to protect them running around in here from shrapnel and uh, grape shot and stuff like that. So paint this a canvasy color. All right, let's get back to what I was talking about over here. So over here, this is actually the door. You can actually, it's actually modeled on. There's a little door here, and this is the entrance to the captain's quarters over here. There's four carronades on the top. Um, the actual bridge, so this, that's the poop deck. So this is the quarter deck here, and you can actually see it's sheltered from the rain, but there's the wheel. The ship's wheel is back here. More hatches, uh, more carronades, and that's where the main mast goes. Uh, down here, there's more hatches to below. There's more doors and stuff like that. This little doodad right here is actually where the the bell, the ship's bell is right underneath here. This is like a little metal hood for it. Uh, and I do believe they used to have the uh, compass that sits in its little water uh, to keep it upright. And a lamp is actually also underneath here. Uh, a capstan we already talked about. Uh, what else do I want to go over? Um, stern chasers. So in some, you, when you look at the rules, you'll see some of the ships have guns shooting at the back. 
typically these wouldn't be pointing out the back, but they would be, uh, the doors for them would be underneath here. Um, in a lot of cases, um, you see guns going right up into the captain's quarters. Sometimes these windows would actually open and you'd have guns that would be stowed, but in battle the guns would be rolled out uh, into the captain's quarters. So even the captain's quarters uh, would turn into um, uh, wartime stuff. Um, the thing with the boats, this is I found quite interesting when I did the research for it. So in the sprue you get a whole ton of little boats. The smallest boat would be the captain's boat, but there's other boats, and typically you would glue them right on here. But what I didn't know is, what happens if the ship becomes becalmed, or, uh, right? So there's a couple things you can do. One, you could, uh, there, there'd be a boom that you, not attached to here, but you would rope it up, like there'd be block and chain here. You'd rope it up and the boom would be out, and you'd actually hoist the boat up onto the boom, sway the boom out, and that's how you'd lower uh, and raise raise and lower the uh, the boats. So the ship's boats would come out. So you could put a small mast on them, uh, but typically they were rowed. You could go out with a couple boats and most of the crew and literally tow this thing. It would be back-breaking work, obviously, but you could do it. Another thing that they would do, which is called warping, this would happen... Uh, if you get if this thing gets stuck on a sandbar and you need to pull it off you would take your boat right here you would lower the anchor into the boat and then you would pay out the anchor rope the boat would go let's say to weigh out over here right with the anchor and then from here pitch the anchor the anchor drops somewhere over here and then they would start rotating the capstan and still starts tightening and tightening and tightening it and then this would advance up and hopefully pull it off the sandbar so there's a couple interesting things. I plan on using my boats um, as markers for uh, to, rep um, to repair uh, the rudders or stuff like that. You'd have the carpenter would be out in his boats. Um, you could use, let's say you get a rudder damage, you could use the boats to, to, to pull around to like change the direction of, of a vessel like this if it's you know basically stopped but you want to aim it with some guns. Uh, I think in the War of 1812 they did this with a ship that had no masts left, but they would literally aim it with the boats and the guns would still fire. Um, on the larger ships you'll find that there's four anchors per ship, and apparently what they could also have is you'd have anchors to the sides called shear anchors, so if the rudder got damaged you would pitch this one anchor off to the side and when it would hit bottom, um, because it's only being pulled on one side, it would actually start turning the ship and then they'd immediately lift it. Um, one last thing, the, and this is just more of a, um, I know this video's going long, I want to keep another 20 minutes. Um, I'm planning on basing my ships, um, but ignore the base. Uh, but this is a 30 millimeter by 60 millimeter MDF and uh, the Vallejo uh, water texture um, that I've painted over because I'm going to be repainting it. But if you'll see here, these are the anchors that are that come with the brig. They're gigantic. I think they're way too big. Um, looking at some pictures of even the French frigate Hermione, uh, which is one of which you get, which is one of the named ships that you can get uh, the stern plate and the figurehead are in there. Uh, There's a replica built in t 2008, and even then, uh, the anchors that are painted on the frigate are still way larger than the ones on there. So I don't know if you want to put the anchors on the brigs. I won't for the for my next two, but I mean, here I was just excited to get them going. And here's an example of the same layout um, with the uh, spanker sail in the back that's hanging from the gaff and the boom. Um, and the only one mast has all the foot ropes and everything. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I wanted to keep it under 20 minutes, but I still want to explain. Oh, one last thing. When you go to assemble this, um, Put the rear mast in first before this, then put the gaff and the boom, because when you're sliding them in, I put my finger in between here, to so when I'm pressing into the mast, it doesn't bend the mast. Uh, so just pro tip, um, you know, jam your finger in here, and then you can plug in the um, the boom and the gaff as it's drying, and then you're free to go. That's just my tips for. Uh, building these bad boys a little uh, easier. Uh, that's it for now. I will get back to painting. Uh, check you guys later. Cheers.